Okay. So I decided to be a minute earlier because it usually takes a minute or two before um, before I get this message that I am live and before any participant or any subscriber will be able to see it. So, Anyway, I am here for my Straight from the Student Substitute Stories number 23. <laughs> I haven't done it for a week because I was thinking I will just make a compilation of uh, the notes that I have and then I will start uh, sharing them with you. So anyway, welcome Night Slasher. Thank you for being here. The Meme Slayer, thank you. Welcome. Hello, aviation team. Welcome also. Uh, team, did you see the uh, did you see the video last night that I did? I actually, I live streamed it and then it's now a video. So it's the Carol tonight last night and I, uh, as I promised, I uh, dedicated a song for you. <laughs> so yeah. Hopefully you've seen, um, I sang the Hey Jude, your favorite song. I dedicated it to you. Anyway, um, I wasn't there. I'm so, so, so sorry. That's okay, uh, team. I know, <laughs> I know that's okay. That's why I just, uh, I know that it will come out as a video later on. So that's fine. So anyway, thank you. Um, so last week, I was subbing for both middle school and high school, but mostly middle school. So <laughs> that means there were more difficult days for me than good days, uh, since middle school is a little bit harder to, to manage. But, um, and especially if I am in this, uh, county that I really don't like very much compared to another one that I really like. Um, so anyway, I, I thought instead of uh, reading to you the uh, warm up that I always give to my students that they try to answer, this time I am going to read to you my notes to the regular teacher which actually summarizes what happened in the class or in, in, her, in the classroom while the teacher is away. So I won't be um, mentioning the names. I will not uh, read the names, but I will just read their initials instead. So, okay, let me see first the name slayer. <laughs> okay, so let me start with uh, this letter that I gave to one of the uh, regular teacher in a middle school. Here it is. It said, all students were informed that I will be giving them letter grade for their behavior and participation in class. So they all know that they will receive a letter grade. I usually gave I, I, I would give A for exemplary behavior, B for good behavior, C for fair, and then I will tell them that, that I don't have a D. I jump right to F to emphasize that F is a failure. It is for uh, disruptive or disrespectful behavior. So uh, for this class, the first and second period, I had two students who, who got an F which is a disruptive or disrespectful behavior. Anyway, I will continue with my, my uh, note to the teacher. So all students were informed that I will be giving them a letter grade for behavior and participation in class. A and T were mostly chatting and were both told to put away their cell phones. See, cell phone is a big problem in the classroom. For this class, it's mostly the cell phones that is uh, a big distraction. For, for this class. I, L, and G, so three of them, were also most chatting, mostly chatting, 
and were all distracted by one of their cell phones. So there was this one girl who had a cell phone and they were all um, browsing on it together as a group. So could you just imagine what kind of this distraction that is causing because they were giggling and laughing and so it was a distraction. So, so I told them to put away the cell phone. She was hardly doing her work and instead drawing on her sketch pad. This student, she doesn't care. She, she didn't care a bit. She was just drawing on her sketch pad the entire class period. Even if I um, tell her to start working on her uh, activity for the day, she wasn't paying attention. So v, uh, another one, V was really quiet, but he was mostly staring blankly like he was physically present, but mentally absent. I have some students like this, they're not talking, which is good for me because they're, you know, it's not disrupting the class, but they're just staring blankly on the wall. So they're, they're physically present, but, oh, I mean, they're physically present, yeah, but, but mentally absent. So I, I just let them be, you know, there must be something going on in their minds. <laughs> Um, somebody from ISSP came to get the class activity for G. I told him to take a picture of what's on the board, but he left soon after, so I was not able to give the two handouts. I, let, I later called the ISSP to inform them that the handouts for G were still there, and this uh, staff didn't even care. So I was thinking, you know, if the staff won't care, what's going to happen to the students? So. Anyway, the ISSP is the place where students go if they are suspended. For the next period, uh, I put a note here, it says D was told to put away his cell phone three times, three times. I did not ask one more time because he was just ignoring me and I find that very disrespectful. He did not do any work. T was told to put away his cell phone and he was hardly doing his work. He was told to put away his cell phone twice. D was also told to put away his cell phone. He was also wandering around, around the classroom and was not following instructions, which is very typical of, of middle school students when there is a substitute teacher. W was told to put away his cell phone again, and he hardly did any work. C was distracted too much by chatting with T. So there was a lot of chatting in the classroom. M also hardly did not work and was told to put away his cell phone. C was quiet and trying to do her work, but she seemed to be having difficulty. P was told to put away his cell phone twice, and he would, but he would readily comply. He seemed to be doing his best on his work, and I appreciated that he was quiet. The rest of the class was great. And then for the next period, this class was really loud when they came in. J was chasing M around the classroom, going on top of the chairs and tables. She was later browsing on her cell phone. T was told to put away his cell phone five times right at the beginning of the class. So I kept on telling him, oh, but, but he just wouldn't listen. Every time I turn around, he's, on, he's back on his cell phone. He was either browsing or texting. He later told me, okay, leave me alone. You are like a copywriter. So that's what he told me the last time I told him to put away his cell phone. M was loud, wandering around the classroom and hardly doing his work. I was loud and was told to put away her cell phone two times. So this classroom, I think, um, I don't know why most of them were just on their cell phones and would not listen if, if they were, they're being told to put away their cell phones. I don't know what to the regular teacher. So anyway, Anne chatted almost the entire class period. I reminded him at 1244 that he has not even started his work. Usually when I leave a note, I put the time to be very detailed in my report so that the teacher will know that it's past 30 minutes or so and, and the student hasn't started anything. A was also extremely loud on and off. I was told to put away her cell phone two times. D was really quiet but was mostly staring blankly. Again, another student staring blankly and hardly did any work. 
I asked the student aide to, to assist him and he said he already did. R was sleeping during the first half of the class and was wandering around when he woke up. So I wish he just slept the whole time. S mostly chatted the entire class period. And then I would always uh, write this to the uh, regular teacher. Thank you for the opportunity of supervising your class. Please do not hesitate to call or text me if you have any questions. So that summarized my, um, my day for this middle school class. Um, okay, let me read some uh, notes here from you. I'd love to have Mrs. D as a substitute teacher. Thank you, Nils Mayer, but I'm a very strict sub uh, substitute teacher. Like eight people would all get F's in my class. <laughs> yeah. Uh, from Kim, I would love to have her as, a, as my class teacher. Thank you, Kim. I would be the luckiest child. That is so sweet. Uh, Mrs. D, I used to have that kind of kid in my previous school. You aren't even allowed to bring cell phones in my school. And me too from Mrs. Layer. This was very strict from Freddie Mayo. If I had a teacher like you, I would never have disrespected you. Thank you. Has anyone ever pranked Mrs. D as the fact that she is a substitute teacher from Mrs. Layer? Um, Okay, so anyway, um, team, I am not expecting a lot of uh, participants today because this is a new time slot. Uh, I just wanted to be able to read my notes just like uh, when I, uh, I am uh, videotaping my, my uh, segment, my, uh, this, this segment. So it's, it's okay, I'm sure. Um, Others would be reading the, uh, or watching this video later on. So, oh, potato, be a potato. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. D, good morning. Good morning to you too. So anyway, um, besides the, the letter that, that I just read, I have here some notes that uh, I will just read to you so that you will know how the students uh, are behaving or what kind of students we have nowadays. Okay, so. The first one is, uh, M lied to me about her name so that I could not follow through with her behavior. See, when I do a, a, a subbing, I would always make a sitting chart. I would uh, put a sitting chart on a piece of paper, and then I will write the names of the students so that I know each and every one of the students' name, and I can write notes to the regular teacher very detailed report and with, with the name of the student. I don't just say some of the students or one of the students. I would write the name of the student so that the teacher will know. So because of this, some students would not tell their names or would lie about their names, but I always catch them because and even I would even ask if I have doubts or I have suspicions about a child not reading uh, his real name or her real name, I would ask for the student ID number and that's where I catch them. So if they can't give me their school ID number, then I would call security and have them kicked out of my classroom. That's how I uh, am able to find out if the child or the student belongs to my class or, or if he or she is skipping from another class. Okay, so next one, S kept on changing seats even though I assigned seats to everybody or I told them not to change seats at the beginning of the class period. M has been very, very disruptive in class. L was playfully kicking other students and disregarded me when I apprehended her. I, you know, there's a lot of students who are always playing like, it scares me that they're going to be hurting each other. Okay, uh, another one. J did not do any work today and in the previous days when she came back from ISSP. She also did not turn in any work that I had her to do while at ISSP. Usually, you know, the students would have something to do, even if at the, uh, even if they're in the in the ISSP room, they would uh, have the what's supposed to be the activity for the day. Mm. But 
they don't care. <laughs> you know, they just wanted the time to be over and, and just go home. That's that's all they wanted to do. So they don't care. Anyway, the next one. M was playfully was playing Tico with three other boys, which was inappropriate behavior in the classroom. So there was this girl and she was tickling, you know, <laughs> she was tickling three other boys and they were getting loud. And uh, I, I just thought that it was inappropriate because <laughs> the way they were doing it, uh, it didn't look good to me. They were tickling different parts of the body. So, anyway. R yelled at the top of his voice, which caused a big disruption in class. There's always a student who would always be out of the blue or all of a sudden would be yelling at the top of the voice. I, I don't know why they like to do this. Uh, they are seeking attention. Probably they don't get any attention in, in, in their homes. <laughs> Uh, H was excessively talking and even singing at one point. <laughs> Always somebody who's going to be singing out of the blue, just singing. I, I mean, I don't mind if they, they're at level one or they're just whispering. But if you would just sing out of the blue and, and sing it loud, what are you trying to do? Why you, You're trying to disrupt the class. So I always write a note about that to the regular teacher. Um, C lifted a chair up so that one student could not have a seat and placed, placed it in the middle of the classroom, thinking that it was funny. So this student, she just took the chair, table and chair, she she carried it and then she was like going around first in the classroom and then put it in the middle of the uh, you know middle of the room and so all the students were looking at him and and or looking at her and you know she was just trying to cause a disruption so i don't know about these students <laughs> and then uh R was being very loud and talking back and when I told him that I will write him a referral, he said it won't make a difference. See? So for, for these students, they don't care because they think that it won't make a difference. Sometimes it is the behavior of the students. I think most of the time, the behavior of the students actually depends on the kind of teacher they have because they are, there are teachers that are really strict, they discipline their students, and there also are teachers who don't care. So they don't even care what their students are doing when they are away. So I actually had a, um, a lesson plan from, from a teacher in, in a piece of paper that was crumpled and torn, and I was thinking, this is so unprofessional. So if the teacher is unprofessional, what, what could we expect from, from the students? <laughs> okay, um, let me see the comments right now, if there's any comments. Um, my school people can be late and go on phone and do whatever they won't so this is really different for me to know <laughs> yeah it's i don't know why here in in the united states it is it is just so strange because <laughs> in my country the students are very well behaved and very respectful to the students oh hi there golden impala welcome it's so nice to see you here so see, if I change my time, I sometimes uh, come across the subscribers who, who has never, I mean, rarely, rarely been in, in the live streams or in my videos. So I'm, I'm glad to see you, uh, Golden Impala. 
The mean slayer you live in Ireland. Okay. Golden Impala, I miss you. <laughs> I miss you too. <laughs> okay. Uh, Hawking Red is here. Good morning, Mrs. B from Hawking Red. Uh, good morning, and I hope you will have a good day today. And thank you for being here. Okay, team, I'm not advertising, but I'm going to be doing three Robux or Rob Roblox give on my channel DP times in a while. Okay, team, that's that's nice to know. Uh, I, I that's okay, that's fine with me. <laughs> it's it's nice to uh, to know more about my subscribers. So I really appreciate if you're just you know chatting in my chat room or let this be a like a meet up place for everybody where you can. Say whatever you want or share whatever you want, and that's that's good. Um, okay, so anyway, my next substitute teacher stories or straight from the students will be uh, this week. I've done the last one I had was last week, so I'm trying to make new schedules for my live streams so that because uh, I, I have reached my 4,000 watch hours, which was my aim. That's why I was doing too many videos and live streams. But now that I've reached my 4,000 watch hours, I will try to uh, give a or make a regular schedule, maybe once a week or twice a week instead of a daily thing. From potato, Mrs. D, my teachers always assign seats, but the thing is that me and my classmates always sit wherever we want, even when the teachers assign seats. So that's that's fine, Mr. Potato. I mean, uh, some students really would want to be with their with their you know friends, and that's fine with me. So if a student approaches me and says, "Can I sit with her?" and I think that you know he or she looked responsible enough, then I would say, sure, why not? And then I would even tell the students, if you want to move, just let me know so that I can mark it where, where they transferred because I need to know and because I, I, I observe the students. So I may be strict, but uh, I also, you know, I'm very considerate. So if, if they approach me nicely and ask for something, sure, why not? But... Um, there are just those students that, you know, like last Thursday, I think it was Thursday, there was a note from the, from the teacher that this student and this student cannot be together. So I think it's, it's causing a problem. They're not supposed to be together. So at the beginning of the class, I, I looked for them, I asked for their names, and, and they were already seated together. So. I said you will have to move because you're not supposed to be sitting next to each other. But guess what? They won't listen. So those kind of students, I would not insist because and you know they will just be aggravated and they will be more disruptive and disrupt the whole class, the entire class period. So what I would do is I would just be uh, close to them all the time, and I would even say if you will not keep uh, if you will not stop talking, if, we, if you've been continuously talking and not doing your work, I will be sitting right next to you. And sometimes if the, the class is so rowdy and, and, and really loud, sometimes I would even say, if you will not stop talking, I will be sitting right next to you, so close to you that you can't even move. And one time I actually did that. I sat right next to a student, so close to him. <laughs> so, you know... Sometimes I tell them, you know, try me. Because when I say something, I, I, I really do it. So <laughs> anyway, there's um, those students that are really um, uh, quiet and, and likes to do their work, those students that are really good or A students, those are the students that really like me. Because they like that uh, when I'm there, the class is quiet. And they're doing their work because with, with other substitute teachers, they don't care. They're just there to, to you know, babysit the, the students. So they don't care if they're doing their work. They don't care if, if they're loud. 
So these students, the A students or B students are the, the students that really like me to be their substitute teacher. So anyway, I am glad that you are able to come to my uh, live streaming this morning. And like I said, I'm, I'm happy to see uh, those uh, who, whom I haven't seen for a while. So thank you for being here and thank you for participating. I will be, oh, Chester just came in. <laughs> Chester, I am about to sign off because it's been 25 minutes. And um, so I would just like to make uh, a few announcements. I would uh, be live streaming again tonight. I don't know yet what we are. <laughs> uh, whatever it is, I will live stream tonight. And I will announce that uh, later. And also on Sunday, I will be live streaming. Might be uh, for my uh, for my coming uh, outreach to the street children in Manila. Because like most of you already know, I will be in the Philippines from November. I'm actually leaving Jacksonville on November 2nd and will come back on the 14th. But I will make a stopover in Chicago and in Shanghai, China. So the, um, the outreach, actually, I moved to November 10 instead of November 11 because um, some people there that they're going to be helping me are not available on the 11th. So I'm moving the outreach on November 10th. So tonight and, um, tonight and tomorrow night, I, I might be doing this uh, video or live streaming about my outreach to the street children in Manila. So I hope you I hope you'll, you'll be there. And uh, <laughs> team, I will watch your stream. Thank you. Okay, memes later, I really have to go. And okay, time for you. <laughs> anyway, again, thank you so much for being here. And see you on my next live stream. I love you all. Later, later.